In this video, we're going to do the In Crowd Jazz Piano Tutorial, a song by Ramsey Lewis. Very popular song, as a matter of fact. The interesting thing about this tune is that not many people play it, and there's a couple of reasons for that. Not because it's tremendously difficult, but because it's tough to hear and pick it out or transcribe, if you will. So what I'm going to do is actually provide you with the sheet music, and you're going to want to get that because it's not easy to come by especially a real transcription, which is exactly what I did. In fact, I transcribed this myself. So I'm pretty sure it's almost accurate. Sometimes it's tough to hear the recording because of course the famous recording has it live in a club with all kinds of people talking and clapping and dancing. And so it's not always easy to pick out the notes, but I think I did okay. And you're going to want that sheet music. I'm going to post a link to it in a little bit. So what I'm going to do now is play a little bit for you. I'm not going to play the entire thing, but let me play a little bit of you so you can know what it sounds like. And then we're going to come back and discuss it. Okay, let me play it. Okay, so that's a little bit of the tune. One of the things that we're going to start with, though, is the solo piano version. So you're not going to hear this in the recording, which is this riff that starts in a riff, or the definition of a riff is a ostinato pattern that kind of repeats over and over again. And it sounds like this. And so that's not an easy thing to do. It's not part of the recording because you don't really need that when you're playing with bass and drums. And I'm later on going to provide you with a link to the backing track for bass and drums. So you may or may not need this, but I think it's important to discuss it. So the interesting thing is if you look at this, it, it looks quite complicated, but essentially what it is is every note hits an eighth note in the bar. So what we're going to do, and I think the way to think about this is one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and and that's how you kind of count things off and so where does the notes or where does each hand go for one and two and so if you go one and those are in the bass and then two is in the right hand and then two and is in the left hand and then three is in the right hand and of three is in the right hand and then four in the left hand, and then four and, sorry, four and in the right hand. And so, and so that's the way to get the feel of it, but you need to know that on the three and, this chord changes. Almost reminds me of that lick in Charlie Brown's Christmas where it's kind of that fitting of the ands together. It's not an easy thing to do, but I think that's the way to think about it. The other thing I should mention is that I'm using the fingers in the right hand like this, one, four, and five. And then when we get to this note, it's also one, four, and five. So. Now again, that's not part of the version that you would play with the trio that's the solo piano version so you've got that riff going so it kind of gets the feel of the tune going and then in the next line it gets into the melody so here we are at the first four bars of the tune and you'll notice right away I, you may not notice right away but if you notice it says d7 but the interesting thing is you've got an f natural here an f natural here an f natural here but the reason why that is, is because it's a blues scale over D7. It 
So that's a normal thing in blues to write D7. Now, sometimes you'll see minor blues, but this isn't minor blues. It's more based on the major side of it. So, you know, if, if you're thinking it's the wrong chord symbol, it's actually the right chord symbol. It's just the chords reflect more D minor than anything. Do you hear that really D minor sound? So for the first one, and again, the left hand, I'm really just comping here. I, it's very hard to hear in the recording what he's actually doing with his left hand. It's easier to pick it out in some places, but not necessarily here. So what I wanted to do is just give you a version where it could work with the trio or solo piano. So I am plunking down the root here and then five and three of the chord. Now I'm doing a little bit of comping with my left hand, but you can do that sparsely or on the beat or whatever you wanna do. It doesn't really matter. What matters is that you're kind of catching that first part. All right, in the right hand, this note gives it that blues feel. And so you're sliding the third finger, just like you would in any blues. And I think it's important as a tune to learn this because you're not gonna get this kind of writing in a lot of blues things. You'll, you'll see a, a melody like a lead sheet, but you won't see things written out like this. So it's a good thing to learn. So slide into that note and then here we've got and so the first one of the four is five and two in the right hand in terms of fingering and then it's five one five one five and then one in the bottom and then two is on the second note so it's a little hard to reach that because it's a ninth right Now, it's gonna to be tough to jump that ninth. So you got, this is the ninth here, and then you're jumping all the way down with your hand to catch this in uh, fifth finger, third finger, and first finger. And then down at the bottom, you've just got this D minor chord here. Now, sometimes I play it like this. I like that. It's sliding the third finger, just like it did in the first phrase. Yeah, so. I'm just doing a little bit of practicing here, making sure I do it correctly for you. Okay, I think that's all you kind of need to know about this. The other one here is this is a little tough to stretch to, even though it's just an octave. So I would say one, three, and five here in terms of fingering. And again, that melody really reflects blues. So yeah, blues. Thinking of it like that is a good idea. So that's line one. In the next video, we're gonna tackle line two. It's not an easy tune to play, so we're gonna take a few tutorials and make sure we cover it well. So in this tutorial, we did the introduction, the four bars, and then the first four bars, and in the next video, we'll do the next four bars and try to move it along as quick as possible. Okay, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, write them below. Let me play the tune for you so that you uh, get the full feeling of the song because I think it's really something you're going to want to learn because it's, it's a nice tune and it's very popular. It's just not a lot of people play it. So if you're the one that plays it, it's going to work for you for sure. All right, thanks for your time.